Now what we're going to do is we're going to generate a daylight factor analysis diagram. So we're going to analyze the daylight availability within the space. Um, where um, the way this works is you you're placing what's called an analysis grid into the space and then you run a calculation and the program you know, figures out what are the materials that are being used, what is their reflectivity, uh, what kind of glass is used to the windows, how much light is actually going to come in. So the first thing we'll do is we actually have to place the analysis grid. And if I look, uh, if I go into the 3D editor and I go look into plan, I can for example select the floor or the ceiling, it doesn't really matter. And I go to this uh, tab here on the right, this blue uh, grid, that's the analysis grid. So I just click on display analysis grid. So um, I've done this before and that means that this grid is actually fit into the into the space. But if, if, um, if it's not, it could actually just be totally not fitting. So one thing we'll do is we actually select um, the ceiling Let's see, we can see in, uh, in a perspective, we can see I've selected the floor, but it doesn't really matter. And if I go to, so display analysis grid, turn on and off. And now I want to fit the grid to this object. So I say auto fit grid to object within. And now the grid is actually confined to the space. If we look at this into uh, perspective, you see it's actually at uh, a desk level automatically, which um, makes a lot of sense because that, that's what you care about, especially in an office building, that's what you care about the daylighting level um, on the desk surface, which is where the visual task is being performed. You can see it already shows up into our vis visualization, so we have this grid that's lying there. <coughs> um, so we could run a calculation now but uh, one, one kind of bug with, with Ecotech is that when there's intersections like this, these columns right here, that uh, these cells tend to get uh, the wrong values. So every cell that intersects with kind of an object gets the wrong values. So when we fit an analysis grid into an object, we always have to make sure that, there, that there's a little offset. Like you see right here, there's actually a little gap. The, 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 you know that is the border of the um, object, and this is actually fit into a little bit smaller. You know, I can I can change the uh, resolution of this grid by going to grid management, and right now it's 30 by 30. If I make this 60 by 60, you know, I'm going to have a much higher resolution, so like a much more gradual, um, m much more information because essentially the program calculates the daylight factor at every intersection. So, so that's basically four times as many. That's going to take a long, a long time. So I'm going to just do 20 by 20 for now, just to keep it. Um, uh, but you see, it always kind of fits in. So now um, we have to do a little trick in order to actually get um, these columns carved out of our analysis grid. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off for a second. We're going to um, draw a a plane. That is one continu one continuous plane that that carves out these these columns. And uh, if you just follow me through here real quick, I'm going to create a new layer called a new zone. Sorry, called analysis grid template. So this is just a surface that I'm going to use to um, fit the analysis grid on, and then I'm going to turn it off. So first I'm going to actually draw four lines real quick as guidelines. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. Um, you see I'm going here. These are lines. I click it and then I just draw and they snap to the back of the mullion from, from the c interior corners of the columns. Then I'm going to go to this um, symbol here that's called a plane. And I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to go the extent of the space and then I'm going to basically just carve out the columns. And I don't actually have to, um, once I'm done, 
I don't actually go to the last point, I just click hit escape. So now you see what's what's selected is a new surface that is exactly where I want the analysis grid to be. I don't really care that there's no analysis grid in front of the column because that's a pretty small space. If we go into the perspective, you see it's actually um, in plan. That's the right that's the right object. So now this is going to disappear if I turn this off, um, but I'm going to select it. Now here you have to again hit the space tab. Here we go. Plan view. I'm going to back to my analysis grid. I'm going to say display analysis grid, but it's not fitted yet. I'm going to auto fit grid to objects. And now I'm going to fit the grid to selected objects. I have this, this template outline selected. And I'm going to do a 3D form fit, right? It's not going to just try to fit it within. It's going to do a 3D form fit. And um, I hit OK. And this looks pretty good. See how it actually just try to fit it in with this kind of cell resolution. It's not exactly um, symmetrical, but this is the best it can do with the cell size. So if I want to have a higher resolution, I'm going to have to go to grid management. Let's just do 30 by 30. And uh, it's another little bug. It just always uh, kind of, you have to redo this again, but it's not a big deal. You have to go to auto fit grid to objects, selected objects, hit Okay, um, this is good enough. So I'm going to turn off my um, analysis grid template. So before I do the analysis, I really have to think about materials now. Remember when we brought this in, we made it all a panel of cork for some reason. Um, now the amount of data that's going to be in this space um, is obviously dependent on the openings but also on the materials. So I just want to go through all the interior surfaces real quick and figure out that we have um, materials that make sense. So <clears throat> I'm going to turn off the analysis grid quickly. I'm going to look at the back surface. I'm going to um, so you should have in your file, you should have a, a panel of some sort because that's what we brought in. Okay. So I, I don't want to, I don't want a cork panel in the back. I want a, um, you know, a, a, you know, white partition, just a standard, you know, plaster board partition. So I'm going to go to partition and there's two options that are giving here frame plasterboard partition, frame plywood partition. I'm going to choose the plasterboard. If you actually want to know what that um, consists of, you can go um, to the properties and then you get this dialog box. The properties are the most important. It gives you things like, um, you know, the solar absorption, visible transmittance. In this case, is zero, it's not transparent. Um, it has like thermal mass, thermal lag. So there's all these. Um, properties that we don't need at the moment because we're not doing a thermal analysis we're just doing daylighting so we really care about the color you know the ref reflectivity that internal reflectivity is kind of the key um, uh, element and uh, a um, surface surface reflectivity of one is a hundred percent reflective material which kind of only theoretically exists so this is actually pr even though it's kind of yellowish it's actually pretty light and if you drag this higher than this blue bar they are giving you a warning that this is unrealistically high so we're gonna we're gonna leave leave this this is actually um this is pretty high so we want we make sure that the sidewalls so i'm gonna hit again the space bar to get to the sidewall um we're just gonna make sure it you know that so you're going if it's if it's a panel right now which it is and you're going to partition framed plasterboard partition okay you don't actually have to if this is automatically uh, clicked here then the the changes are going to be made automatically um, i'm going here it's already set as a plasterboard partition now the ceiling is really crucial um, i already changed this before so it is set to a ceiling acoustic tile suspended but if if it if it's in your case when you start it's a cork panel you go 
select a uh, ceiling and then a acoustic tile suspended. Again, I wanna see what is the reflectivity of this. It's 0 0.7 color reflectivity internal. It's pretty high. So this is, this is great. Um, we don't have to do anything and now we have to select the floor. Again, you know, if you if it doesn't select the right um, surface, you just hit the the space, the space tab until you have the material. This is the floor. Um, I pre-selected it to be a timber carpeted uh, suspended. Now, really, we only care about the surface. We don't care about the construction. The construction is really only matters when you do thermal analysis. Um, this is 0 0.6, so this is a little bit a uh, little bit darker. Um, doesn't have that much high reflectivity, which is also kind of realistic. And the floor isn't that crucial for reflections anyway. Okay, um, I guess we could select the, the the material of the columns. They probably have they're still cork. So I'm going to go to my layer, uh, column layers. Column one and two, I'm gonna select them both and I'm gonna right click and say select objects on. So now they're all selected. I'm going back to the um, material. I'm gonna make those actually also partition plasterboard because these are column covers, right? These are the structural columns are inside. These are actually uh, probably sheetrock columns. Maybe you're, if you're a fancy uh, building, you, you have them uh, painted white metal, which we could also do. We could make them a panel that is a um, stainless steel, for example. You know what, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to keep them as a um, frame plasterboard partition. The um, probably change the mullions. The mullions are, um, let's go to the layer that are mullions. So it's really important that you set up your 3D file um, with enough layers. Mullions, select objects on. Now they're all selected. I'm going back to the materials assignments and I'm going to make them, um, let's see what else we got. Point door, panel, window, partition. I'm gonna make them stainless steel. These are stainless steel mullions. Let's see what stainless steel uh, for properties it has. 0 0.796, so that's a pretty high um, reflectivity. All right, so we're almost at, at, the, at the border after which they say it's unrealistically high. So stainless steel column um, uh, emollients. And everything else I'm just gonna leave. Uh, one important thing is to check what the windows are. Uh, that's the crucial element where the light's gonna come through. So we may wanna select the um, facade glass. It's, it's my uh, layers, select objects on. So we have the have them all selected. And now we're gonna take a look at the materials. Single glazed timber frame. Okay, so that reflectivity isn't that crucial. It's actually, um, you know, also pretty high, but what we uh, really care now is the visible transmittance, zero to one, so 0 0.7. So it, it doesn't let 100% of the light through, but 73%. Uh, uh, single glaze is, you know, if you go again to the second uh, uh, tab here, this first one is property, the second one is layers. You can see this is just a quarter inch single pane glass. So that's very bad for um, energy calculations. Doesn't matter for light at the moment, but I think we should just change it to a double glazed low E timber frame. Let's do double glazed low E aluminum frame. If we go back to the properties, you see that um, the vis visible transmittance is actually a little bit less. So that's kind of a, a payoff. You, uh, you, 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 you don't have as much um, light coming through because there's now two pieces of glass.